In this video, I want to briefly talk about sandwich theorem. A sandwich theorem is something that uh, doesn't come up all that often in, in Calc 1. In fact, you, we can usually use a calculator, use a graph, use some other method to get around it. But in Calc 2, it'll come up quite a bit. Uh, and I'll explain where the name comes from here in a minute. It's sometimes also referred to as the squeeze theorem. But first, let's just talk about this limit. We've got the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared multiplied by the sine of 1 over x. Well, you certainly know what's happening here. I mean, x squared is a parabola, so the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared is just 0. The problem is the sine of 1 over x, because 1 over x, of course, looks like that. So trying to take the sine of something that has an asymptote um, we run into some problems and you know if you remember the cosine of 1 over x was uh, oscillating of course the sine of 1 over x we have trouble with that as well so our algebraic methods of, of factoring or or trying to use something that we remember about sine uh, they aren't going to work here or kind of kind of out of luck so we got to go to something else so the sandwich theorem really is just a way of bounding and thus the name sandwich you know you've got your meat in there or peanut butter or whatever in the middle we are trying to make this function x squared multiplied by sine of 1 over x the middle of our sandwich and bound it with I guess bread on either side so let's just start by looking at sine okay let's just start with that now sine the sine function of course is always bounded between negative 1 and positive 1. We know that about sine. And even if you're taking the sine of 1 over x, you can't get an output under negative 1 or above positive 1. So what I could do is say, I don't know much about the sine of 1 over x, but I do know that the sine of 1 over x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to positive 1. I know that. Well, as you remember from uh, algebra classes, you can manipulate inequalities like this with some algebra. So you'll notice this is the sine of 1 over x. I bounded it. Okay, This is my part in the middle, my bounds. If I multiplied everything by x squared, Okay, so if I multiplied negative 1 by x squared, if I multiplied sine of 1 over x by x squared, and if I multiplied 1 by x squared, the inequality would still hold true because all I've done is multiplied everything by x squared. So I haven't necessarily changed the function I've changed the function, but I haven't changed the inequality because I've done the same thing to every side. Well, now we add the limit statement back in. Okay, the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared must be, must be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine 1 over x must be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared. Well, this limit right here is equal to 0 because it's just the parabola. This limit right here is equal to 0. So what I've just said here is that this limit in the middle is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 0. So this limit in the middle must also be 0. Okay. Now, what this looks like graphically, and I think most of the time people would just use the graph. Let me show you what x squared sine of 1 over x looks like. Okay. It looks like this. If I can kind of move that out of the way. It looks like that. So you can see that it's definitely from both sides. It looks like it's approaching zero. It's not, and you can look at my very small uh, uh, 
scale here. I've really zoomed in on it. Uh, it's not like cosine where it's still bouncing back and forth, and the reason it's not is I've added this multiplier out front. Well, I wanted to show you how the sandwich theorem looks on this and how I could bound it. And remember, we've said that x squared, or negative x squared, is less than or equal to the function, and that function is less than or equal to positive x squared. Well, if I pull this one in, you can see how I have bounded it between the parabolas. x squared is approaching 0 negative x squared is approaching zero and I have bounded the function it's always greater than or equal to the negative x squared and less than or equal to the positive x squared and that's why it's called the sandwich theorem because I've just sandwiched the f function of interest between these two functions so it's just getting squeezed in there and that's why sometimes it's called the squeeze theorem as well